This is the BYD update, episode three. No, you didn't click on the wrong video. That's BYD's earlier name that got shortened to spell out the sound. So BYD becomes BYD. And later on, some clever person said, let's just tell everybody it stands for build your dreams. In this episode, I go over some new products, Q3 financial results. There was an election in the US and could BYD sell more electric vehicles than Tesla in Q4? How about for the whole year? In October, BYD sold over half a million new energy vehicles in one month. However, in November, they did it again. They broke their own record. I said they'd need to have a strong finish to the end of the year to get to 4 million vehicle sales. But at this point, they're pretty much guaranteed to surpass that. Sales of battery electrics were so strong in November that I think they will outsell Tesla in Q4. That happened in Q4 last year, and I think it'll happen again. In fact, sales of BYD all electric vehicles are knocking on the door for Tesla's full year sales. Let's look at the numbers. Tesla needs to have its best quarter ever in order to not show a sales decline for the full year. They need to do about 6% better than their best quarter ever. If Tesla only matches their Q4 sales from last year, BYD may end up just 25,000 BEVs short of matching them for the full year 2024. But you know, who cares? Tesla's an AI company now. BYD sales will soon surpass Ford globally. When that officially happens, I'll let you know. That will also put them ahead of Honda and Renault and Nissan. Now I count those two companies separately, not combined. After that, I estimate it'll probably be about two years before they can catch up to GM or Stellantis. Here in America, the election is over and anyone who thinks they know what to expect from a Trump Musk administration is wrong. This is gonna be highly unpredictable. Trump has already promised higher tariffs on China across the board. He also said he would raise tariffs on Mexico due to illegal immigration and on Canada due to illegal immigration? I, I don't know. Apparently the USMCA deal now sucks. Others are arguing that this is all just talk, a negotiation tactic. He could get sweet talked into a huge deal like Foxconn in 2017. Now I know Foxconn is not mainland China, but I also know that that deal amounted to a whole lot of nothing. But what if BYD promises to build an assembly plant in, let's say, Arizona next to Lucid and Nikola truck? It would score political points in what has become a swing state, and Trump can claim that he's creating jobs. Now, Elon Musk should be deathly afraid of letting BYD or any other Chinese EV manufacturer into the U.S., but he too has been difficult to predict. Either he believes that Tesla is completely immune from competition, or he's lost interest in electric vehicles. And if he wants to sell more EVs, he desperately needs help from China. Put these two together and good luck predicting what happens next. Mexico doesn't know what to do either. Reports are that negotiations between state governments and Chinese car manufacturers like BYD have been put on hold. They want to proceed with caution and allow their federal government to set the tone. Don't expect any announcements from BYD for a while. BYD is said to be entering the South Korean market next year, so let's add that to the chart. They were also reportedly in discussions with KM Mobility of Korea to build a battery plant, but no confirmation has come from either company. Also unconfirmed are reports of an assembly plant in Cambodia. I'll, I'll wait to add this to the board. Who knows, maybe Cambodia is in and Mexico drops off. I don't think I'll ever make a video where BYD hasn't announced something significant. The Chinese new energy vehicle market is always adding new products and lowering pricing. It's clearly moving faster than traditional Western automakers are used to. Feng Shen Bao launched the Bao 8, which appears to share some features with the Yongwang U8. That's the SUV with emergency float. Feng Shen Bao translates roughly to Formula Leopard, so you'll sometimes see it called Leopard 8. Unlike the Yongwang U8, which is a quad motor for electric motors, 
and a gas engine that acts only as a range extender, the BOW-8 has two electric motors, and the gas engine does appear to kick in some extra power to the wheels. Max output is only 737 horsepower. I should note that the new Chinese vehicle launches often have some mystery in the details. When the BYD Shark was launched in Mexico, I said that the gas engine does not drive the wheels, so it's only a E-Rev or a range extender. But now that it's launched in Australia, the media events confirm that, in fact, the gas engine does put some power to the front wheels under certain conditions. So the distinction between a parallel plug-in hybrid and a series E-Rev is starting to become a little blurred from a technical standpoint. Some are starting to call these advanced PHEVs a series parallel design since they have functional features of each. Simply put, whether it's a plug-in hybrid and the engine helps drive the wheels or it's an E-Rev with much longer range, they both have a plug to recharge and they both have a gas cap to refill. Notable about the BOW-8 is the addition of Huawei's Quinling, I think I pronounced that right, ADAS 3.0 system. In an earlier video, I said that BYD's greatest weakness may be autonomy. Partnering with Huawei is a great way to catch up. Unlike Apple, Huawei has not given up on the idea of an autonomous vehicle. Starting price for the Feng Chen Bao 8 is under 53,000 US dollars, but you know, I hate giving out numbers like that because it's really not a fair comparison. The whole new energy vehicle market in China is skewed so low for price. Even BYD's premium brands have lowered prices on some models in a race to the bottom. If this new energy vehicle were exported to another market, then you need to add logistics, tariffs, and costs to build up the sales and support network. We've seen examples where other cheaper BYDs get priced at nearly double when exported to another market. So if the Yangwang is a quad motor E-Rev and the Feng Chen Bao is a dual motor plug-in, then that leaves room for the Denza N9 to be a tri-motor plug-in hybrid or electric vehicle. It made an appearance at the Guangzhou Auto Show, but full details have not been released. This is called their E3 powertrain. In the last BYD update, I talked about the Denza Z9, which is a GT or a sedan. They are also a tri-motor that can be configured as either a plug-in or a full battery electric. Same is true for the N9. You can see how BYD is trying to give each of its premium brands unique styling and functional differences. It's not clear how much is shared between the models, but you can certainly see a lot of similarities. And they all use the same BYD blade batteries. Bloomberg reported that back in 2017, BYD and Apple worked together on batteries for the now canceled Apple car, Project Titan. This Bloomberg story, in my opinion, was misinterpreted by some as saying that Apple helped develop the blade battery. However, BYD claims that this is not the case. Apple and BYD did learn from working with each other, such as ways to squeeze more batteries into a smaller pack. Apple loves to make their products thin and elegant. But other than that, the Blade battery is completely owned by BYD, and a deeper partnership never materialized between the two. Someone who is using BYD batteries is India's Mahindra. For now, India is a highly protected market with hefty taxes put on vehicles imported into the country. Their electric vehicle market is growing, but the products built domestically are far behind Chinese EVs. You can buy an imported BYD vehicle, but it will cost you much more than an EV built domestically. Mahindra's Inglow platform is their attempt to catch up. They signed a deal with Volkswagen to work together on batteries and EV components. Mahindra is still saying they will use unified cell from Volkswagen in 2026 and are in talks to build them domestically. But those are just plans right now. Don't be surprised to see them continue using BYD as a supplier longer than planned because their batteries are damn good. The one and only blade. There's only been one blade. There's only ever going to be one blade. Actually, new blade batteries are coming from BYD. Here is what was said by a director of the company, 
Now, I read it to say that a better battery is coming, likely next year, but he says nothing definitive or crazy like it will be a different chemistry or a size or format change. Just more energy dense and longer lasting. Great. The big headlines from BYD's Q3 financial results were that they surpassed Tesla for revenue. That is an accomplishment, but it really shouldn't come as a surprise. Their combined sales of battery electrics and plug-in hybrids are leaving Tesla in the dust. What I found interesting and maybe a little troubling was the increase in inventory on their balance sheet. It's up over 40% from last year. There are a couple ways to read this. BYD says it is due to increasing orders. That could be true, and Q4, as I've said, is always a huge sales quarter, so having material on hand makes sense. Selling more cars overseas also adds to inventories as you have products in transit. Or this could be a sign of trouble. Demand may be lagging versus prior forecasts. We won't know until the end of March next year. It's not a big deal. I mean, BYD certainly can afford it. And apparently BYD can afford to hire 200,000 new people. From August through October, we can only assume that most of them were workers, but engineers and developers are also likely included in that figure. Bloomberg reports that BYD is asking suppliers for a price cut. One specific supplier was asked for 10% across the board. That's been interpreted as a signal that the price war in China is about to intensify. I previously worked in purchasing for a Fortune 50 company, and we would regularly demand price cuts when times were tough. It would not surprise me if a 10% target was given to suppliers that, let's say, bend metal and electronic suppliers were given a much higher target. I'll end it here for this episode of the BYD Update. Four million new energy vehicles sold should be no problem. I think they'll surpass Tesla for battery electric sales in Q4. And for the full year, they're going to come really close. This will be the last video of 2024. So happy non-lunar new year. And thanks for watching.